Good morning to you ladies, my name is Jacksepticeye and welcome to a game called Monster Prom Which already I absolutely adore the menu music for this game, it's so like <laughs> It's so like surfer dude, so I knew nothing about this game until Cry actually messaged me and said that he was in this game And he gave me a code for it, so thank you Cry for that, but it was only after that that I realized a bunch of my friends, or a bunch of people I know online are all in this. Aaron is in it, Nate Wants to Battle is in it, his fiance Christina V is in it, Sung Won Cho is in it, um, you, you know him as Pro Z online. So a bunch of people that I actually know, and Jesse Cox was like a secret character in it apparently, and his, his voice was in the trailer. So a bunch of people I know and really admire and respect are all in this game, so I wanted to give it a shot anyway just for that reason alone. But then I saw the trailer for it and it looks awesome. It's a monster dating game. Which I'm very, very excited about, so let's get in. I have to ask them to prom. Um, voice interjections, yay or nay? Make your own voices. Oh, as much as I love making my own voices, I want to see... Yay. <laughs> I want to see a bunch of my, my peeps go at it in this game and hear what they sound like. So, apparently there's a multiplayer element to this game as well, which I had no idea about. Um, until I saw the trailer too, so I want to play on my own. Full game around 60 minutes, short game around 30 minutes. Let's do a short one to start off and see what it's like. Ah, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Oh my god, game developers, you have won me over with the soundtrack alone. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Oh, I get to pick. Oh, this guy's nice because he got a little shoulder buddy, a little shoulder boy. Ah, God, but you have fire hair. You kind of remind me of Beast Boy Frankenstein and you're just adorable. What do I pick? Oh, I want to go with Sassy Fireheadstein. Who are you? Name, Red. Pronoun, She. Red, Amira, or custom name. Wait, hold on a sec. Ah, oh, that's very, very nice. Good on you, game devs. I like that a lot. Um, okay, wait, 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 wait. Who are the others then? Yellow or Oz. Brian or Vicky. I'm gonna go with my girl Amira. She need. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave her pronoun as a, pronoun as a she. I wanna play as as Amira like this. Showtime! Showtime! I don't know who's doing the voices of which character. So um, I've yet to find out. I may have missed my my favorite people. Um, and we have yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. Ah, I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19. Vanderbilt. You're adorable! You remind me of Undyne. A sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Huh? Okay, well that's Nate anyway. <laughs> Damien LaVey, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. You're already my favorite. <laughs> There's my boy, Aaron. Oh no, Aaron is the big fluffy lovable jock. Oh, be still, my little beating heart. Scott Howell, 21, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Liam DeLioncourt, 4XX. God, I thought I thought white noise was taking over my brain and I was about to die. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor had er hid that he was a truly lovable dork. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Polly Geist, I get it. 22, question mark? A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. Pickle ice cream. I've been there, girl. And Vera, Vera Oberlin. Or is that. V oh, yeah, it is an R. I thought it was Oberlin. 23. A mean, self made Gorgon with a merciless sense of business. You guys are so quirky. It was clear. It had to be one of them. But who? Who are we gonna take out on our date to Monster Prom? 
We only had three weeks to choose our prom date. And even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid. And we were ready to start. Wait, were you rhyming all this time? Oh, it reminds me of Gravity Falls. Looks like there should be a mystery shack right there. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sick you are. Monster Prom stupidest pop quiz ever, TM, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into character stats. It's like taking a quiz in like Cosmo and then thinking that everything that's in the Cosmo magazine turns out to be me in real life. Was I really the insensitive husband of a wife I never had all along? <laughs> this way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start! You wish you were raised by- Oh, look at DJ Funk a Mustache over there. I like you, buddy. Wanna be best friends? There was that sound again. I thought I was going deaf. Alright, you wish you were raised by a mysterious old man who saved me from the streets in order to raise me as his disciple in the ancient ways of rad DJing. Ah, the dream I once had. A really progressive marriage between a kick-ass venomous snake and actual fire. I love fire and I see no issue with being raised by it. Fire does raise a lot of stuff. Usually it raises it to the ground though. A pack of wild wolves who also happen to be tech moguls who own some of the most profitable companies in Silicon Valley. They would be kick-ass role models and wild wolves. Sick! I think I'm gonna have to go with the wolves, guys. I wouldn't be raised by wolves. I was raised by wolves out in the back country of Ireland. Out in the countryside, I was raised by wolves. Hence, my uh, very masculine uh, facial hair. Are you, are you impressed by it? <laughs> Oh, we're so wealthy. Oh, I wanted to be so fun, though. Fuck buddies for life. Oh, it's about to get interesting. If you had to have sex with an animal, which animal would it be? Finally, someone is asking the question that I have been afraid of answering all my life in public. Now I have a reason. Sorry, my brain switched off there for a second. No one can make me fuck an animal. If I fucked an animal, it'd be of my own free will. As a matter of fact, I already have fucked an animal. So the joke's on you, pal. Ha! I have! Not, because that's, uh, bestiality and I don't want to be, uh, uh, a purebred horse! At least I can keep his semen and sell it. It's worth a lot. Who said there was no silver lining to bestiality? Kind of uncomfortable about this right now. A dolphin! They're the only other animal that fucks just for pleasure, so at least we can both do our best to have a good time, right? Am I really gonna have to logic out the reasoning behind which animal I'd fuck? This one, this one, uh, pushed the slate. This one pushed it under the rug to be like, ha, I fucked no animal, ha, uh, and then it's like, well, jokes on you, pal, I already did. Purebred horse. Do I look like a guy who would fuck a purebred horse? Now nah, I'm fucking a dolphin. So fun! Ha <laughs> ha! Jesus Christ, can I call the episode that now? Jacksepticeye fo fucks a dolphin, question mark? Demonetization, question mark? What's the sexiest type of knowledge a lover can have? The knowledge of how to make a great risotto. For I love food and risotto is one of the sexiest meals a person can make. How to set stuff on fire, pretty sexy. Lyrics to all the Disney songs. That's pretty sexy. I'll make a man out of you. How to make a killer cocktail out of anything. Ah, pfft, pfft, ah, pfft, no. Sports things? Oh yeah, sports! Sports ball! Obscure 80s movie trivia, that's pretty cool. All the principles to build a financial empire. Nah. I wanna- I wanna be with somebody who knows all the lyrics to all the Disney songs. Cause then the- <laughs> Sorry, I had a bubble in my throat and I had to get out. At least then they could teach them to me. Out there! Wait, what's the fucking lyric? I can't think now because of the song playing in this. I'll have spent one day out there. That's it. That's all you get. This one. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going with the mermaid. Oh, well, oh, well. Oh, 
Oh, hell yeah! Let's do this! Amazing! I love this so much. All right, so we get. Oh God! Oh, where are you going? Where are you going, Amira? Where are you going? Um, right. So this looks like Hogwarts. Are we going to the Whomping Willow first? The back house, bathrooms, gym. Can't go here apparently. Uh, where do I want to go? Auditorium. That's pretty cool. I could get my jams on, bring out my sexy guitar, and start playing music for people. You know, get up there and be like, I care about my feelings. Cause I play guitar! That'd be pretty damn good. Everyone would know how sensitive I am. I could go to class. Hmm. Learn a little thing or two. Ha! Huh. For wusses! Library, outdoors. I'm an outdoorsy kind of guy. Get out there in my shorts and get the pies and ivy all over my feet. Oh, come on. I was just having a good time. That day, during recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes full crazy. Uh -huh. Typical Amira. That's my girl. Well, well. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point, there are like 300 people. I want this soundtrack so badly. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. That's my kind of- Oh, I love this. That's my kind of gal. Doesn't matter what's going on, as long as you're having a rad time. Um, is that Damien? You gain plus two fun. Oh, yeah. Chalk that up on the board. Plus two fun, please. I will take a plus one self-esteem for um, one of my monies. Oh, I like how the narrator has no face. After all that, you decide to look for a spot outside the school where to get some good sunbathing. <laughs> but you fail to focus on your sunbathing since you see Scott and Miranda deep in conversation. Jesus Christ. Oh. Scott. <laughs> Whew. Whew. Okay. I thought this was supposed to be voiced. Come on, I want to hear Aaron. It's a sports game thing, Miranda. I think I'm a good boy, but there's something that gets me growling when I see that opposing team. Oh, Scott, believe me, I understand better than you may think. It's exactly how I feel about those HORRENDOUS AIR PEOPLE! Sorry, my racism crept out. <laughs> air people? Yes, Scott, obviously the air people. I know I've told you about them before, they're the sworn enemy of the Mer people, and they must be all destroyed if they refuse to accept their superiority. You do know I'm one of those air people, right, Miranda? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, wow. All of them? <laughs> that sounds really hard. It will be. They're a horrible, ruthless nation of feathery socialists who refuse to bend a knee no matter how many times my father invades. Your father is the Sea King. Just like Tama killed him. They don't like guacamole, Scott. They eat the crusts of their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They wear socks with sandals! Socks with sandals? And fanny packs! Oh, man! That's a pretty scary enemy, Miranda. What are the mer people going to do about it? That's a great question, Scott. We've tried reasoning with them through bombs, chemical warfare, and torture. But they're entirely unreceptive. Hmm. It's really weird that wouldn't sway the air people, but maybe you can step in and help? Scott and Miranda probably have different takes on what the best strategy would be, so think hard about what you pitch. This is weird. Do I have to decide if I want to attack people or not? Read your truce. Use your great cheerleading skills to put an end to this feud. Oh. That would be pretty good. I could take out my pom-poms and relive my school days? Wipe them out. Make the air kingdom the mer kingdom by flooding the entire sky. I don't think you know how this works, but reach a truce. I'm a... I'm a lover hugger, not a fighter do. What? So charming. That's me. I got charm coming out of my asshole. <laughs> yes, you're a genius. Cheerleading is always the answer. Scott, as much as I appreciate you, peace isn't the answer with those hideous air people. Also, 
How do you two plan to put an end to a feud that has existed for centuries just by cheerleading? What's it, Jesus? <laughs> like this. One, two, three, four. Hey, air people, just end this war. Scott, my man. That was pretty good. It's pretty good. Five, six, seven, eight. Reaching peace would be really great. You're kind of off on your metering there, bucko. You kind of have to, no. Reaching peace would be really great. See, it's too, it, there's an extra syllable in there. Reaching peace would be real great. That's, that's how you do it. Just, just count it out. One, two, three, four, four time there, bud. Nine, 10, 12, 13. I can't remember how to count. Remember to always use sunscreen. He would decide not to point out and he forgot 11. Just missing one number is quite good by lovely Scott standards. It's just one number. It, number's just an age, right guys? Scott, this is useless. Trying to negotiate with the air people is never an option. But then, a slip of paper falls from the sky. It's a death note. This is the most ambitious crossover since Infinity War. Miranda picks it up and reads it. Dear Scott, I really liked your cheerleading. Keep being this cheerful. Sincerely, the sun. How did he write anything? He don't got arms! Hooray! This has nothing to do with our feud, Scott. Ugh, I guess I should seek war advice from somebody else. Have a nice day. <laughs> she might be right, but I won't ever stop cheerleading. Thanks, Amira. Thanks, son. Hooray! Was it my hulking bad boy biceps? These plus one charm effects that I got going on? Is that what helped me? Sure was, Scotto. But then, you spot something. Oh god, Snake Lady and Thigh Gap are here. <laughs> Good one, Polly. He totally thinks he's friends with the sun now. We can mess with his head big time. I know it's not the voices that are in the game, but they're not saying anything out loud, so I thought I had to come up with them myself. <laughs> right! Also, I didn't want the big guy to feel like his cheerleading was useless. As annoying as it can be sometimes, he doesn't deserve to be sad. Oh, that's nice. You know what? I agree. <laughs> oh, look at little Scott with his heart head. Oh, it w oh, what did I get? Plus two fun and plus one creativity. I'm winning. I'm winning at life. I'm winning. Oh, it was Vera and Polly once again messing with people's heads. But you know what? Scott is happy and he thinks your idea worked. So good enough. <laughs> Pass go and collect $200. Nice. Okay, we're doing this pretty well. Oh no, I have to pick a place to sit. Ooh, who are you guys? Ooh, Miss Kitty Cat. Miss Raven. I kind of know these guys already, but I, I like bad boy Damien. Damien's my dude. I kind of like this girl as well, she cute. But I want to know what your deal is. You're taking a break from socializing to eat your lunch when someone punches you in the knee. Ow, my fucking knee! Uh -huh. It's the Slayer and she's hiding under your table. But I don't want to. I, well technically I've been preparing to die since I was born. So aren't we always prepared to die? Technically. Okay, eat knee pain, freak. Now I'm gonna punch your other. Ow! You just threw your apple at her. Finally, a use for that red delicious. Oh, I'm so gonna call apples from th that from now on. Yo, barkeep, toss me one of those red delicious. And he's like, the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, ha, no problem, bud. I'm quirky and cool and random. Really wanted that apple, though. You defeated the Slayer. She flees, leaving two choice pieces of loot behind. The loot flashes rapidly. I'm not gonna keep that voice up. Getting ready to disappear. Almost as if you're in some kind of video game. Wait, I am! No time to contemplate the nature of existence. Pick some loot before it's all gone. Garlic rice and holy water. One monster's weakness is another monster's dinner. A gun that shoots steaks with eat shit burn into the side of them. I mean, we all know what I'm gonna pick. <laughs> we all know that I'm gonna pick the eat shit gun. I so want a gun, and I, I choose to believe that it shoots actual, like, not wooden steaks, but actual, like, meat steaks. Plus it shoots stuff that says eat shit burn into the side of them. That's awesome. You scoop up the sweet-ass gun and go about your day. 
obviously, you're not going to use it to kill any of your classmates. You're a monster, not a monster. Sure. But later, in biology class, the teacher calls on you without warning. You panic because who has time to do the reading when you're trying to smoosh your classmates? But your panic turns to self-assurance when you hear the teacher's question. What do flies do? Flies eat shit! And then you fire one of the guns at her and stick her in the face with it. She'll, she'll have to pass you then, A+. plus. Rather than responding with lame-ass spoken words, you respond by firing a wooden stake straight into the chalkboard. EAT SHIT! exclaims the teacher. Why, that's exactly right! Congratulations, you won prom! You won school! You are the smartest, most intelligent, handsomest person here! You meant to shoot the teacher, but hey, do whatever works. You gain plus four boldness. Look out, everybody. Jack Septicai is now a bad boy. <laughs> I'm really I'm living all the stuff that I wanted in life. Amira, I like you. You are the one for me. Okay, Kitty Cat is in the bathrooms. So should we go in there or should we go auditorium? I'm not going to class again. We did outdoors. We did uh, class. Let's go to the bathrooms. Let's see what happens. Oh, you're the shop. Welcome to my little shop. Buy some shit. I have shit that will boost your stats, shit that will lead you into stupid new adventures, even some shit that might be much needed at some very specific moments. So, take a look. Huh. Huh. <gasps> I can get a Bob Ross picture. Creativity. Happy little accidents. That's what my mom used to call me. Happy little accident. Is that a used tampon? A tampon used by the former prom queen. You know, for good old blood rituals, or in case you're just a creep with unhealthy obsessions. Don't even dare to ask me how I got this. Uh, a corpse? Hmm. I could go to prom with a corpse, and then I win on my own. A sexy fake Latin accent. Ooh. Why the hottest thing is being yourself, honey. By a Latin accent is a close second, to be honest. I can already do a flawless Latin accent. Watch. Come to prom with me, man! Flawless Latin accent. A fake badass tattoo. I don't need a fake f badass tattoo. I'm already a, a badass with my own real tattoo. It's from a video game. A little video game called Blue de Borne. Don't know if you've heard of it. Too poor for this. Oh, it's $10. How much do I have? Seven? Hype station. High school social life is so hard nowadays that hiring a PR agent is totally a thing. Crafting your art requires years of hard work, education from great mentors, and tons of raw talent. But damn, that sounds exhausting. So let's settle for a motivational poster for now, okay? Hmm. A blanket with two holes. Literally just a white blanket with two eye holes in it. You'd have to be an idiot to mistake this for a ghost costume, but most of our classmates are idiots. Ooh! Oh, I could get cocaine! A Russian novel with insightful approach to universal matters such as love and death. Are you sure about this? You can always use Wikipedia to get the general idea and still be able to act. Okay. Oh, Kanye glasses. I think I want the accent. Is that gonna bring up my charm? What did I get? Bye, stranger. Purchase a sexy Latin fake accent. I'm going to talk like this from now on. Dun 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 dun! I like how the short route is supposed to take 30 minutes and I'm already there and I'm nowhere near the end. Um, let's go to the auditorium. Oh no, that's where the shop is this time. Let's go to the gym! Oh, hell yeah, look at me go! That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team spirit. Let's go kick some booty! That's my speech. Leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural born leader. Well, of course, have you not seen my face? Plus two charm. I am all about that charm. I'm Irish, it's what we have. There you are, swiping through potential monster match dates. When you spot Scott pacing and muttering to himself in distress, you can't bear to see someone so adorable in so much pain. 
So you might as well try to ease it however you can. Wow. Is that your smolder look? That's my one. Wait, no. I have to do it like it. Sexy smolder, just like The Rock in the new Jumanji movie. Uh, please hire me. Uh, uh, acting real following this video. Oh! Hi there, Amira. Do you think I'm adorable? I sure do. Yes, in fact, you were literally just thinking that. I was. Anyway, the other day I was out in the forest trying to find a quiet place in a large branch to do some pull-ups. Before the big sports game. You know how I love to play sports ball. When suddenly... God, that music. When suddenly I was approached by all these talking forest animals. I want to actually give him- I want to give him my favorite voice. They were pretty big for big forest animals, and I'd never seen animals that could talk like that. You kind of are one. I mean, other than us werewolves, if you're counting us as animals. And they were just so fuzzy and adorable. Ha ha ha, I said as I laughed at how adorable they were. But they said they were impressed by my pull-ups and my muscles, and I was even more adorable. So the nice little forest animals with giant heads made me their king. Which was really, really flattering. I just don't know about anything about ruling. I'm not sure if I'm good enough to be a king. Aw, oh, poor Scott. It's up to you to help him rally. Scott, Scott, he's our boy. If he can't do it, no one will. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Scott, a good king is a strong ruler. Physically strong. If you can do 100 push-ups, you can be a good king for sure. True royalty has been inside you all along. Why else would your eyes, eyes be royal blue? Why else would your eyes be royal blue? Oh, well, well. I'm go with this one. Or this one. This one? This one. This one? This one. This one! Royal blue! Baby blue eyes! Just like your boy. <laughs> My eyes are royal blue? Liam said they were cerulean. What does Liam know, really? Liam also said to go shave your armpits. What does Liam know? But I always knew that wasn't a real word. <laughs> Clever Liam. He was clearly testing me. Huh. So if my eyes are royal blue because I had royalty inside me all this time, does that mean I have like a little blue king or queen inside of me? It is like my true self? I always suspected such big muscles couldn't be of this world. So good old Scott is just a mecca for the little blue person fighting against evil. I wonder what could be my real- Fuck off, Light! One of them's in the house. What my real royal name could be? Uh, Sir Beef Wellington? Lady McBeef? No. Lady McMuscles! I like Lady McBeef, personally. I smell like beef. I smell like beef! I should ask my lo loyal furries about that. <laughs> furries is what I've decided to call those giant furry talking forest animals for short. Oh no. Wait a minute. <laughs> Thanks for helping me get my confidence back, Amira. You should come meet my furry friends sometimes. Well, he's actually just met some furries instead of actually meeting animals that can talk. Oh, Scott. You're- you're- you're beautiful. You're handsome. You're buff. You got some sweet baby blue eyes. You got great teeth. Great bone structure. Great ass. And great abs. But you're not really a thinker, are you, Scott? Well, you've always wanted to hang out with Scott. Not too sure about these circumstances, but it's better nothing than hanging out at all. You gain plus two smart brains and plus one fun. I'm all about that fun charm. Oh, that's my highest stats. So me. Amira, you are a punky go-getter and I love it. Oh, we can talk to Tony the Tiger. Apparently everything with him is great. Tony the Tiger is the most optimistic man. Um, but I do want to get closer to bad boy Damien. You've just sat down to eat with Damien and Liam. Well, to eat with Damien, Liam's just taking pictures of his food. Plus the Slayer is here again. With a leather-clad figure drops from the air vent onto your table, it's the Slayer. Slayer, why are you always trying to kill me? I'm so here having a good time, you're always out here attacking me. Lunchtime's over, dirtbags! Time to die! 
This always happens when we sit together. I don't know what voices to give you guys. I forget what you sounded like. Your death-based rhetoric is offensive. Don't spoil my food pick. Oh, I'll spoil more than your food pick, Count Stankula. Do you want some water for that? I'm about to spoil your face. Just his though, right? Both your faces. Fuck. The Slayer is right between the three of you. You can't save Liam and Damien, but if you act fast, you might be able to save one. Immobilize Damien with the Lord's Prayer while Liam escapes. <laughs> You've been waiting for this moment your whole life. Flip the table for justice. Okay, no, I want to talk to Damien. Normally when you flip tables, it's out of anger or mischief, but this is about to be the most righteous table flip ever performed. Look at Damien's face! I like it. No! My footing! No! My artfully arranged cafeteria food! Yes! Fucking up school property! The Slayer ends up pinned under the table, along with Liam. Damien jumps down and there and starts punching indiscriminately, not caring who he hits. That's my fiery boy! You have to admit, Amira and Damien go together like frog legs and cheddar. I've been to France, I know what I'm talking about. So, you know, just a normal day for Damien. I've never felt so alive! Offensive. Whatever. Let's flip all the rest of the tables in the cafeteria while the flipping's good. You righteously, righteously flip every single table in the cafeteria. I do have six boldness. With each table you flip, you find Damien is flipping a little more for you. Damien, you would do that for me? Week two, evening. Okay, I feel like I should go to the shop again. I don't feel like I'm getting closer to anybody. Oh, I have two money. Oh, I can buy a tampon. Do I really want to buy a used tampon? Can I actually use this thing? Okay. My bad. My bad. Alright. We're into week three. This is the week when the prom begins. We have to be smart about this. Where would Damien be? Auditorium. We haven't been there yet. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you figurative oral sex. Neat. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. I've always wanted to be rad. Now that I've gotten tongue fucked by William Shakespeare, I can have that. You gain plus two creativity. I need the boldness though. You're practicing your very best monster mash when you hear the sounds of an argument. Which is so strange in these sacred hallowed halls of education. Lol, JK, can you imagine? Oh, he's back. Amira! Hooray! They made me their king, and they deserve the bestest, most wonderful king there ever was. And I'm gonna work as hard as I can to be that king, no matter what it takes. Scott. You realize they're not cute little baby animals in need of a king, right? They're furries. I know they're furry, Vera. I'm the one who told you that. Okay, I kind of like Scott. He's cute. He's adorable. He's a big fluffy bear man. No, Scott, they're furries. It's a kink. Yes, Vera. There are many kinks in my plan. That's why I need to work them out to be the best ruler. Forget it. Excuse me, did you say you need help being a good ruler? I know all about that. Being a king is easy. As daddy always says, only live, only live peasants can stage a rebellion. Oh, Miranda. I'm not really sure. Fear is your most important weapon, sweetie. Your second most important weapon is, an act is actual weapons, though. Torture soup spoons, razor teacups, a knife on fire, you know, the usual. I don't know, Miranda. I appreciate the advice, but I don't think that's the kind of king I want to be. He has to smolder at the end of most sentences. Nonsense! I'll go get you the butter knife shuriken right now. Oh god, look at her eyes. <laughs> it just seems so unnecessary. 
There must be a better, kinder way to rule, right, Amira? They want them to have a happy time under Scott the First. You know, Uncle Scotty, the gun machine. They've been so, so nice to me. They've written me beautiful songs, which are about my adventures, but most of them are the sort of things I definitely have not done. And they've made me amazing drawings, which are very, very generous in their proportions. I just think they deserve the best leader. One who has an accurate but modest ding-dong. Normal rulers make their subjects pay taxes. But what if you pay taxes to them? Flag time! You can't rule a kingdom with no flag. Without a flag, it would be just a bunch of flagless people. Solid strategy, Joe. I like that. You're 120% right. Flags are the best. Oh, Scott. You can't give more than 100%. Let's combine our art powers to create the very best flag ever! You get into an intense art frenzy, which is kind of hot and intimate. So intimate. Somehow the two of you end up shirtless and sweaty while panting and drooling. Painting and drooling! Sorry! Whew! I'm getting, getting a little ahead of myself here. Daddy needs to take a sip to cool down. After three hours of passionate art activity, you put your clothes on again. Because of decency, but mainly because we don't have a shirtless model for Scott. And admire your work! Whoa! This is genius! No, it's actually a not so bad drawing of Scott shirtless and the words Scott rules. But sure, why not? You know how to take a compliment. Scott leaves all excited, ready to execute your plan. As your elders always say, any problem can be solved by drawing shirtless people. That is pretty solid advice. I'm gonna live by that. Later, you stumble upon Scott again. He seems quite excited. There you are, Amira! Jesus Christ, Scott! Warn a person before you show up like that! Your plan was a success! <laughs> My beloved furries seem to love a flag that's basically just me shirtless. They've declared it a national day that should be celebrated yearly by drawing me shirtless. Which is kind of silly since they do that pretty much every day anyway. But the important thing is that now I'm the best ruler ever, and it's thanks to you. I would love for you to visit my kingdom someday. We might even celebrate Shirtless Scott Day, or SSD as we like to call it together. Wink. Yeah, I'm cool now. I don't actually just wink, I say wink every time. You're pretty sure Shirtless Scott Day will totally become your all-time favorite festivity. Already is, it's in my calendar, I'm heading there every year. You gain plus two charm and plus one creativity. Hey. Okay, noon. I think I'm pretty sure who we're gonna end up with at the end of all of this. Uh, okay, I'm staying away from the Slayer this time. Ooh, 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 ooh. This one. As usual, Miranda sits before her immaculate array of carefully arranged silverware. Damien, predictably, is examining her biggest knife. So this is the one for the killing peop for killing people, right? What? Good heavens, no! This is the butter dagger. It would be unseemly to use it on meat. So what then? Am I supposed to use this scrawny looking knife to kill a dude? No, no, no! If you simply must kill someone mid-meal, it is customary to use the fish knife. This is Murfolk court silverware after all. That tiny thing? I might as well wait for my victim to die of old age. That is usually how it's done in my kingdom, yes. Fat or poison. This is ridiculous. Yo, you there. Which knife would you use to kill a guy? And don't say the fish knife. A spoon. What, you need bla- What? You need blades to kill people? Stop with a spoon. Have you ever seen that video online? The one, the slowest death ever? Where the dude is like tapping the guy with the spoon or trying to stab him with it, I can't remember. Go watch it, it's amazing. Um, this one. Holy shit! That's so much more metal! Why didn't I think of that? I guess, when the only tool you have is a knife, every problem looks like a problem you should stab with a knife. Thank you for opening my eyes to the world of silverware-related murder. But which spoon? This is very important. Do you mean the teaspoon? Or the dessert spoon? Or perhaps the caviar spoon? No, 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 none are appropriate. What about this spoon here? The one with the jagged edges upon it. 
Oh, you mean the murder spoon? Of course not. That's for hard-boiled eggs. Why would you ever use a murder spoon to murder someone? It's obviously to murder eggs, not to murder people. Damien nods thoughtfully, but pockets the spoon when Miranda's not looking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Looks like this school is about to get a lot messier. Oh, Jesus, did I just make someone murder somebody else? Huh. <laughs> Oopsies. Okay, Amira. Um... Where have I not been? Auditorium I have been, class library I have not been. Easy steps to enlarge your tentacles. Girls love a really long tentacle. <laughs> or a... Click on link to find out how. Ooh, can I? Oh shit, I clicked! Oh, damn it. Doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? It's not a scam! I want to enlarge my tentacles. You lose minus 10 karma! Which isn't a stat in this game, so who cares? And you gain plus two money. Uh -huh. well, well, I'm living for this. Right. After that, it's time for the most important part of school. Visiting Scott's kingdom of furry animals. As promised. When you get to the forest, you find that most of the trees have been decorated with beautifully, intricately drawn pictures of an even more muscular than life Scott, having various kinds of sex with various different giant furry animals. Oh, well. Mom! Okay, she's not home. She's not listening. We can play all day. Amira, my royal advisor, here to royally advise me while I sit on my Scott throne and rule over my Scott friends. Aren't these sweet little furry forest creatures devoted to me? What? It makes me tail wag with joy. It is at that point that one of the sweet little furry forest creatures giant heads falls off revealing a very startled looking mummy. He's not gonna take this well. Yup, Vera called it. A bunch of kinky furry people doing furry stuff in the woods. Oi! Oh no! What? What just happened? Is he... Is he hurt? Is my little panda friend hurt? Or... Was my panda friend never a panda friend at all? Oh no no no. Scott will be losing his pure joy and innocence over some furry shitty costuming skills. Not on your watch. Not today. You think quickly. Two plus two is four. Minus one, that's three quick maths. Okay, I did it. You know how deer shed their antlers and they start to grow back? Talking furry creatures shed their heads. Scott! That panda must have been a cursed prince, and now that you've turned him back into a person. I like this one. I've heard about those kind of curses before, and I broke the spell with my love for furry friends. As their king, of course, I don't love them in that way. They draw me loving them. They are very interesting pictures, though. Uh -huh. Thanks for helping me out, Amira. I guess I love you too, in a way. Wink. And you guess you love him too. And you love gaining plus two fun and plus one smarts. I am so full of charm and fun. I'm very okay with this. The monster prom. Oh, no. Well, Who will you ask to prom? Uh -huh. Scott Damien. Well, Scott! Damien. Scott! Damien. I don't know! Who do I pick? I've had a bigger bond with Scott this entire time, but Damien is the big bad boy that- I No, I have to go with Scott. He's gonna treat me well. Damien would probably just murder someone at prom. Ask Scott to prom. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. This is what I've been waiting my entire life to do, and see, and be part of. Yes. Please. Prom? I'm not sure, bro. I have a kingdom to rule and attending prom doesn't seem very responsible as a ruler. I don't know about history. Maybe some other king or queen has stopped ruling their kingdom to attend prom. I should check. Ah! It's hit me already! I mean, I think you're the person I trust most and I loved going to prom with you, but my kingdom... Sometimes a good teammate has to make sacrifices for the team. You know, the teammate is me, and the team is my kingdom. Oh, and the sacrifice is not going with you to prom. Scott. Scott, I thought we had something. I thought we had a great thing going on. I am truly am sorry. Sometimes there's not enough space in one Scott for both ruling a kingdom and love. Bye. 
Scott leave. Can we stop it with the cheery, peppy, over-the-top music right now? I've been crushed! Scott leaves, and you swear you saw a manly tear running down his cheek. Shh! It's okay, Scotty. Scotty Boombody. That was my nickname for him. It's okay. I understand. It's okay. You started all this to seduce Scott, but now you put more value on his happiness and on his pursuit of a career as a king of a totally fake kingdom. But you stay by his side as the best furry consigliere that has ever existed. That's my job now. Your relationship with Scott strengthens, and in the end, his kingdom sees that. <laughs> king Scott! <laughs> oh, Aaron. Scott thought his kingdom and love weren't compatible, yet it seems to be quite the opposite. Scott's subjects started drawing lots of suggestive art pieces depicting the two of you. Oh, God. Do I even want to see that? Facing that explicit art made you rethink the nature of your relationship, and it ended up being closer to all that NSFW art. See, it doesn't matter if you go to prom together. In the end, you can totally buttfuck each other anyway. What the hell is happening? Amira, most likely to become a lasagna. What? <laughs> You know what? I'm okay with that. Lasagna is the sexiest of all the foods. Scott's quote. Life is like sports. Both are things, and they have stuff in common. Scott, you really are the best of us. Also, I had no idea how to use my sexy Latin accent. Wait, that was it? Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After Monster Prom, we kept on living our lives. Falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning who we really, who we were, and who we could be. And you know what? As it always does, life happened. And it was wonderful. Scott turned out to be a genius and became the most renowned mathematician in the country. Wait, what? <laughs> how did Scott do that? Jeez, man, why are we standing so far apart? Get together. Who is Thumbhead here? Who are you? And you? And you! And you guys! JK, he became an athlete. Duh. He's still a bit of a simpleton, but as lovable and good-hearted as ever. That's the Scott I know and love. And fuck, apparently. Damien became an interior designer, specialized in torture machines. Last month, Vogue magazine called his products the refined marriage between macabre and chic. Liam kept doing art so hard, he eventually evaporated and became the concept of coolness itself. Liam! That's my dream in life! To be the pure essence of cool that people can sniff you. While leaving the physical plane, the last thing Liam did was give everyone a condescending look. Like that? During those three weeks, Monster Prom seemed bigger than life. And then it was gone. Just like that. Poof! The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were lots of battles left in the war called youth. But once again, we were young. And unafraid, and we were ready to start. <laughs> Man, that, that was really fun. I like that a lot. Oh, look at them all. Look at those sexy ladies. I'm now sexually, sexually attracted to fire and snakes. I don't know who these people are. I know I don't know who that guy is. I know my other two. <laughs> Look at my girl Amira. She the best. <laughs> unlocked. You've just unlocked an erotic fanfic about dragons. This is about to get weird. Dragon heat one night, no limits. Oh, cool. Man, I like that a lot. Little simple game. It's it got such quirky characters though. Like the the thing itself didn't actually go on super super long. And that was- that was supposed to be the 30 minute version of it? God, it still took me like an hour to do. I guess because I got super invested in the voices, but I'd love to go back and see all the different scenarios that there are. There's so many characters that I didn't even get to talk to. Who's your favorite character? My favorite characters are Damien, um, Amira herself, and who else did I really like? Um, I kind of like this girl, and the snake lady. I think Amira herself was my favorite, but I'd love to- I'd love to get into it and... Oh, can I even talk to Amira? Oh, yeah, the other characters- Oh, yeah, I remember. The other characters were the ones I got to pick at the start. 
Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Why is there just a job bot computer in the middle of them? That was really fun! I like that a lot. I might come back and try it out again and see what other scenarios I can get or other characters I can get. Because I didn't even get to go to prom! It didn't matter. It's not all about having to get to go to prom. It's just one night of my life. I still lived a good, happy, healthy life after that. I did make Scott the ruler of an awesome fake kingdom. So that's what it's all about, helping out my friends. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to be able to go check out the game. Um, I highly recommend it. And again, it's me, it, uh, a bunch of the people who I know and a bunch of people who I respect and admire and love are in the game. So for that, I just wanted to play it anyway, but it turned out to be a really decent little game anyway. I, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm gonna play a, a bunch more of it. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, punch the like button in the face. Like a boss! And... Bye bye's on road. But thank you guys, and I will see all you dudes! Get down with this music! Boogie!